Good morning, everybody. My name is Linda Hall. I'm with Connected Community. Um, welcome to our February Friday Forum. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with our group, um, we are a nonprofit organization based here in the northwest suburbs of Chicago, serving young adults with developmental disabilities and their families, um, with a focus primarily on helping families to prepare for and navigate the transition out of school and into what we hope will be a full and meaningful life in their community. Um, today's topic is exploring post-secondary options. We have five different speakers. Each speaker will have about 15 minutes to talk about their program and hopefully we'll have a minute or two at the end of each of them to take questions. Um, because we have a large group, we would request that you put your questions in the chat feature at the bottom of your screen. And Barb Tobias, another one of our Connected Community Board members, will help field those questions at the end of each speaker's presentation. And as I said, we'll get to as many as we can um, without uh, infringing on our schedule and getting to our other speakers in a timely manner. So I want to first introduce Tim Alberg. He is from Elmhurst College, the ELSA program, and he's going to kick us off today. Good morning, Tim. Hi, how are you guys? Good. Nice to see everyone today. Uh, as she said, I'm Tim Alberg. I'm Assistant Director of Admissions with uh, the Elmhurst Learning and Success Academy. Uh, I have to use my, my earbuds because I'm in the office and there's people all around me. So can everybody hear me okay? Okay, good. Cool. Thanks for the, 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 the nods. Nodding on Zoom is now an etiquette thing. <laughs> So I, I've been with the ELSA program here at Elmhurst University for uh, 15 years. That'll be my anniversary exactly two weeks from now or so. So yay, I've been around a long time. We are a four-year college experience program for young adults with differing abilities here at Elmhurst University. In short, every way we can help it, we like to think of our program as our students major here at the university. So ELSA is a non-degree program. We are a certificate program for students between the ages of 18 and 22, or excuse me, 18 and 28. Um, the average starting age happens to be 22. Um, we don't require that students finish transition before coming to us, but we like it if they do some um, before they come to us to get some work experience under their belt. That's a nice thing. Our goal for our students is to have a four-year college experience to be able to to work and expand their academic abilities, their, their social recreational abilities. And the big thing is to help expand their possibilities for work. Um, we really want to see our students leave us with a better ability to seek out and hold meaningful employment and live more independently and improve you know, maturity and social skills and all those kinds of things. So we have you know, 32 classes in the ELSA program, just like someone pursuing a degree would have. Our classes are spread out around our campus, just like a traditional student would be here at Elmhurst. Um, they do interact with our degree-seeking students in a variety of ways. Our secret sauce for our program is that we hire a lot of undergrad students in different programs to work in our program as teaching assistants, community advisors, which are sort of our versions of RAs, uh, job coaches, uh, and uh, educational coaches as well, um, so that they have a lot of interaction ability with all of our students from the word go. Um, they're part of the campus environment. They join clubs and organizations. They can even participate in athletics, although caveat, they have to have participated in their preferred athletic team in high school. They can't, a lot of students hear that and like, can I just walk on the football team? Like, no, you need to have played um, before you come to us. But we do have ELSA athletes on the football football team, on track and field, cross country, golf. Um, they're also heavily involved in my theater program and my music program. And then any of the other 70 clubs and organizations that are available to students here, um, they can pursue and get involved in. In fact, we require that in one of our early classes, we have an intro to college life class that has a get involved in three to five activities per week requirement, in addition to um, joining at least one club and organization. But we do have some safety clubs too, we, uh, Best Buddies. We have one of the larger chapters of uh, college level Best Buddies chapters in the area. So that's a pretty popular one for some of my students who are a little hesitant just to show up and join the chess club or what have you. So um, a lot going on. 
a little bit about Elmhurst in general. So we're a small liberal arts university here in the West suburbs. And we are a university now. Um, the last time I did this thing, we were a college. So we, we actually changed to a university in 2020. So we're very proud of that. Um, but we've been in existence in some form or another since uh, 1871. So if you're really fast at math, this is our 150th anniversary year. So we're very proud about all of that. Uh, we have about, oh, 70 undergrad majors and 20 graduate programs. And we have about 3,200 maybe 3,300 students total at the school at this time. The ELSA program has about 47 students at this time. And of our 47 students in the program, about 34 of them are living on campus. So that's a big exciting part of this program is to have that campus living experience. It is not required to live on campus. Um, our students are allowed to commute. You could actually start part-time and ease into full-time and then ease into the living process, sort of what works best for your student. Um, everybody, you know, in our world is a unique flower. And so we try to be as individualized as we can in, in the way we access our program. Um, but the living on campus piece is a nice aspect of it. It does include um, the life coaching aspects of the program. So you as a parent would pay your, your life coach to work with your student three to five hours per week. You usually pay our life coaches that, that, that popular minimum wage of $15 an hour. Um, and what that life coach does with your student sort of depends on their students needs and and you know we would hire the life coach and work with you as a family to figure out what that life coach does if that's executive functioning thing which is pretty pretty common or navigating some of that social stuff i was talking about or getting involved in in, in any of the campus aspects or just figuring out our homework and, and study buddy plans and those kinds of things or getting into town and having a social life, all of that can fall into the purview of a life coach. So those aspects of the program come, come on pretty strongly with that housing piece. Um, overall though, the academics is something that makes us unique. So we are working on that reading and writing um, abilities and comprehension is a big piece of it. Reading for pleasure is something we spend some time on. Um, and all of that sort of fills into what we like to do is developing our soft skills to help to that job piece. Because at the end, we're not doing a degree, but we are doing everything we can to see our students leave us with hopefully full-time employment. And so with that in mind, we do three to four different kinds of internships throughout the program particularly heavy in the latter two years, junior, senior year of the program, where we're getting involved in on-campus jobs and off-campus jobs. And a lot of those jobs are going to be driven by your student and their interests and what they want to do. We may get a good idea of what we think they can do, but they may have specific goals and things that they want to pursue. So we try to help them learn and grow and, and get some experiences kind of in the wheelhouse of what they're hoping to do. And to support that, another thing that's attractive about us is that we have this, what we call ELSA elective program. So this also aids our inclusion um, in being involved in the university at large. So when we have students who have very specific interest in something they'd like to take classes in, and that could be everything from, I wanna take a music class to I love geography and Spanish. Um, so we kind of get involved in all of those different things um, and have our classes take um, electives pass no pass, but they're participating in college courses here to the best of their ability. So they're doing the homework to the best of their ability. They're doing the notes. They're doing all the things with the, the program as best they can um, with our support. And that allows them to get some unique individualized experiences in terms of the classes they're taking towards graduation. And they could even, if they like, pursue a specific certificate of specialization if they have a really dead set interest. So an example I talk about a lot for that is I had a student who was really into graphic design and using like Photoshop and all those fun tools. And so he got a certificate of specialization um, with these electives and took up a number of courses with our graphic design program and our art major. And now, you know, he had a job working with a marketing department at Commonwealth Edison upon graduation. So that helped him yield something specific to his thing. Not all my students do this, not all my students have to do this, but it's a nice opportunity to kind of make it unique for them. So it's a, it's a pretty cool thing that we do. Um, we have a couple other tracks that have kind of been born out of that. Um, Occasionally, we've had students over the years who've done these ELSA electives and been 
pretty successful with the courses that they do. So they do what we call uh, uh, ELSA plus, where they can choose to take those electives for credit. So the for credit version of that means the, the training wheels are off, meaning we're not doing pass, no pass, we're doing it for a grade. So they may need to get the standard accommodations that most students at Elmhurst University would need um, at a minimum, you know, if that's preferential seating or if that's taking tests in a separate location, but they have to do all this stuff. We can't make modifications for those classes. And so we've had a couple of students over the years be pretty successful with building up some college credit, which they could then take to another school if they wanted to go to a community college, for example, or we have a student um, in 2020 graduate with his bachelor's degree. He started as an ELSA student, took a number of electives, did some supportive courses at a community college along the way, and ended up moving over to an art program and graduating with a degree in art here in 2020, actually 2021, that's when he graduated last year. Um, and we have another student currently who's who that's her career goal to move into a degree program. So it's not easy. It's not a sure thing. I don't tell everybody, everybody can do that, but it's definitely something if that they have the wherewithal and the skills and they build up the academic confidence, it's a possibility. The third track that we offer is called the Advantage Program. And this is actually, I'm a degree seeking student who uh, is pursuing a bachelor's degree, but I could use a little bit more support than what's typically available through our access and accommodations. We have a wonderful person named Dr. Linda Harrell, who is our access and accommodations coordinator here. And she helps all of our students at Elmhurst University to get any kind of accommodations they need, standard accommodations that college students need. Um, and El Harrell just popped in the waiting room. So I wonder if she's here. Um, so they, she works very closely with our students, but our advanced students partner with her to get their accommodations for the degree classes, but they also take a single ELSA class too. And that might be like intro to college life or perhaps social communications in our program to kind of help them with the transition into the college process. But I will say advantage students need to be independent. They need to be able to be ready for this and navigate college life. It happens fast. So it's again, none of this is a cakewalk, but we have a couple different ways that we support our students. And a lot of students like Elmhurst for that reason. Um, we're small, small classes. Um, on, on the ELSA side, our average class size is, is between 12 and 15. On the degree side, our average class size is 18 to 22, as big as 24, but not bigger than that. So we're a pretty intimate institution overall, which is why I feel like a lot of students come here and are interested in our environment. So that is us in a nutshell. The, the last thing, I guess, always close on a down note, Tim, because I forgot to tell, how much does this cost? And everybody always wonders, is it free? It isn't. Um, unfortunately, um, and you'll hear this probably from most of my colleagues who are presenting today, uh, it's a non it's a non credit program. So we are an out of pocket expense largely. So the scary sticker shock price for the Elmhurst Learning and Success Academy program is going to be about just shy of $50,000 a year. It tends to be 48 and a half. Um, depending on the dorm and the meal plan, and that's your living on campus and doing all those things. There is, you don't have to live on campus, so that saves you about 10 grand if you don't live on campus. And there is a part-time possibility as well for ELSA, which is about 14. We do have access to FAFSA. It doesn't cover everything, and it's a need-based situation. So if you qualify, you could get a Pell Grant, you could get FSEOG, which is the Federal Supplemental Educational Opportunity Grant, it's fun to say it. You could get federal work-study funding, and then the college will definitely kick in something. So even if you don't qualify for those things, we'll still give you at least a thousand bucks. And then on the, on the higher end, if you have a high need situation, or if your student's over 24 and don't work, you could get up to $13,000. So only for full-time students. So part-time students don't have access to financial aid, uh, unfortunately. So that's me in a nutshell. Um, I saw that they put the call out for questions in the chat. Uh, feel free to throw them in there. If you forget or later and whatever, um, my email, and I could, or if somebody wants to put it in chat for me, is my last name, first initial. So it's Alberg, A H L. B E R G T at elmhurst.edu. Um, feel free to bug me that way. I'm pretty quick on the draw and getting back to you with questions. Um, we are in person here at Elmhurst, so we are doing everything. We're wearing masks still. Um, we are vaccine mandatory, if that, that's important to you here. Um, but I am doing tour, what I like to call tour appointments. So you can meet with me and I can walk you around the campus if you're interested in seeing the place. Um, I do that pretty regularly. And we have preview days. So our virtual preview day is coming up next week, Wednesday night at 6 p.m. You can go to elmhurst.edu to sign up for that. 
that. And we do, are doing an in-person version of that on March 16th at 6 p.m. where you'll be able to get a campus tour with me and also meet some of my current students there. Tim, um, we have one question. Uh, my son requires a scribe. Would that work? Hmm. Well, for degree seeking students who need that accommodation, we usually allow recording of lectures and those kinds of things. Um, we've had some folks use some technology in the past where the pens that record while you're writing that can work. Um, we probably would go with recording before we would have someone making notes for you. But you know, we're going to work individually with each student in the ELSA program as needed. So as you can imagine, over the years, we've had various students and various you know, inter interfacing in classes in various ways, communicating through iPads and so on. So um, I would suspect that the recording would probably be the way to go, just the way our classes work, but, you know, small classes and those kinds of things. I, I haven't done in ELSA note takers per se, but, you know, PowerPoint presentations being made available and those kinds of things um, are doable. Great question. I haven't had that one before. Okay. Great. Uh, next question is, can you, can, would you give some examples of what students are doing after graduation? You bet. My, my favorite story right now is not unfortunately the most impressive job sounder, but it, because he went and got the job on himself, I, I um, you know, he, he got a job part time working for a big box store as a stock boy. And he wasn't really thrilled with that. He really wanted to work more hours somewhere else. And so he took it upon himself to get a job at Culver's, which is not exactly what we're like, yeah, let's get a job at Culver's. But he did it on his own. And, you know, he's very, very proud of that. And he also lives alone here in Elmhurst. He's not from Elmhurst. And he lives above two of my other more recent alumni who both have jobs working with daycare situations. One works with our local YMCA at the after school program. The other, I think, is working with a, 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 a private school uh, daycare situation for either the teachers or young or pre-K um, preschool kids, I think. They live in an apartment together here in Elmhurst. Um, all three of them are not from this area directly. They live in other suburbs, their families do. But I was kind of teasing Mike, who is working at Culver's, that he's become kind of the Kramer of their building because he can just sort of burst in on the girl. Hey, hey Mike's here. Um, and you can learn a little bit about Mike when you visit our website. We have a day in a life video that was done just before the pandemic started where it features Mike and all the things that he did on campus uh, when he was here. Um, so that's who I've been talking about lately. In the past, like I mentioned, I had a guy who worked full time at um, the Commonwealth Edison with their marketing department. Um, we had a really good relationship with a company called Laco. There's an older video about when we established that, um, where I have three people who graduated from the program who work full time. They average about $17 an hour. They have full benefits and so forth. And now they've been there for several years. So those are kind of our big time success stories. Um, but we have students kind of in all different ways working when they leave us. We, we've had nearly 100% job placement for most of our alums. Some of those jobs are part-time. Sometimes we have people on social security or we have you know, not a desire to work full-time and those kinds of things. So we do the best that we can with our, our situations. But we see a lot of really great outcomes. And my favorite stories are the ones that talk about those guys who are living in their own apartments um, and living independently. Um, we had a couple of guys working at Mariano's um, and they'd been doing that since 2014 all the way up until about 2020 and the pandemic unfortunately screwed that up for them. So they're not doing that now and they did move home through that. The pandemic's been a challenge for all of us but we're kind of coming out on the other end of that with uh, plenty of job availability out there for our students and a lot of people willing to work and we do a lot with our placements. Good question. Okay, Tim, um, the question is, what are your vaccine requirements? Yes, so we are vaccine mandatory at this time. We do have an exemption process. So we do have you know, religious exemptions. You would go through that application process. Uh, exemption students do have to test weekly. At least that's the policy this year. Um, as things evolve, we evolve too. So you know that could change for the coming fall. Um, we're still kind of looking into what about boosters and those kinds of things. Um, but we're, we're about, I think, 87% um, vaccinated through the student population and 95 through the faculty and staff. So that tends to be working out pretty well for us. Okay, great. All right. Well, you know, you couldn't have timed it more perfectly, Tim. It's, it's exactly 1120. And we've got all of our questions asked and answered. Um, Yay. Thank you so very much for
sharing so much of uh, what you do at the ELSA program. And, and um, you have many different layers to it, which is exciting. And to be so local is fantastic for all of us. Yay, cool. Well, thanks for uh, uh, listening to me yap at you for 20 minutes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. So we're going to move on to... Judson University, the RISE program. Drew Burles is our speaker for that. Good morning, Drew. How are you? Thanks there, for joining you. us today. Yes, I'm excited to be here. Awesome. So I have a short presentation for everybody. So let me go ahead and share my screen really quick. All right. And so, uh, hi everybody, my name is Drew Burles. I'm the assistant director for our RISE program over at Judson University. And um, so I'll share a little bit of information about what our program is and then open it up for questions for you guys um, as we're going through. And so feel free to throw those in the chat and uh, we'll get those answered at the end of the presentation. RISE uh, is an acronym and it stands for the Road to Independent Living, Spiritual Formation and Employment. And so those are the three areas that we focus on in our, um, our program. We focus on independent living skills, vocational skills, all within the realm of our Christian institution. And so Elgin or um, Judson University is a Christian institution in Elgin, Illinois. We're American Baptist and we um, have uh, four-year degrees in um, many different areas. We also have master's and doctoral degrees but we also have started a program for students with intellectual disabilities called RISE. And so we are a, a two-year comprehensive transition program for students with intellectual disabilities. And uh, we focus on independent living skills and vocational skills. As I said, we're a two-year program and we offer a certificate in liberal arts at the end of our program. And so we're not a degree-seeking program, but we do um, offer some of those uh, independent living skills and vocational skills through our program. We uh, bring on students who are 18 to 25. And so some of our students go through their full transition program before coming to RISE. Uh, some come right out of high school. And so uh, it just depends on what is best for the students' next steps. Sometimes our students and their families feel like their transition program isn't quite the best fit for them. And so they want to go into a college uh, experience program like ours right out of high school. Others, they want to take advantage of the full transition program that's available to them. Some even go to um, community college programs afterwards. As long as they're 25 when they start our program, uh, they, can, they can come into um, our program that way. Uh, we are specifically designed for students with a diagnosed intellectual disability. That's what our curriculum's geared towards. Um, and so we, we take a little bit of a liberal approach to that. Um, you know, the, the number for IQ for intellectual disability is around uh, 74. We'll, we'll grow kind of two standard deviations above that. So we usually around 80 is kind of our cap, but we'll even accept students who are outside of that range, depending on what other qualifying factors are at play in terms of uh, their ability to um, learn in a college environment. And so that's uh, even if there's not a specific diagnosed intellectual disability, we'll still take a look at that application and go through that process individually too. Um, all of our students have a high school diploma or equivalent. And so that just means that they are completely done with their high school programming and gonna be moving on to a college, um, college experience program. Uh, <clears throat> we, we want our students to have a practical reading and writing skills. So about a fourth grade um, reading level Again, this is so that they can participate in the college life. As we'll talk about in a little bit, they will be participating in college environments. And so we want them to be able to uh, engage with that material as much as they can. And so we say about a fourth grade level, um, really a level that you can kind of read and, and understand new stories that, that'd be kind of what we're, we're looking for there. Um, and then a strong desire to live on a college campus um, in a residential environment. We, we are a residential program. All of our students live on campus. That's a little bit different than what the ELSA program has where they have some commuter options. We don't have a commuter option. Every one of our students lives on campus, lives in the same dorms as our traditional student body. And so um, that's, that's, we want students who have a strong desire to have a college experience in our program. 
we have student or in our program, our students take um, rise specific courses and those are geared towards those independent living and vocational skills. But then they also take elective classes in their second, third and fourth semester. And so they um, have the opportunity to audit traditional undergraduate classes, um, not taking them for credit, but participating within that environment. Um, we also have internships. We have on and off campus internships for our students. And so um, the first year students do an internship on our campus um, in a few different departments that we'll talk about in a little bit, but our second year students go off into the community and work in several different environments there as well. And then we also have community service um, projects and uh, chapel that are requirements for our program too, as, as part of that spiritual formation kind of development within our students. Our uh, curriculum focuses on four key areas. We have independent living, professional skills, person-centered planning, and health and wellness. And so all of our students will take at least one class in each one of those categories each semester. Um, and those are the ones that are RISE specific. And so our classes, our cohorts are about eight to, to 12 um, in a cohort. And that's a group that travels throughout their time, their two years together. And so that's what their class size would be in those or in the, uh, the RISE classes. We also have a chapel that's a requirement for every student on our campus. Um, we offer about uh, 60 chapels each semester. Um, and our students have to go to about 22 of those. And so a little under half is the requirement. They're offered every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 10 o'clock. Uh, like I said, it's an academic hour for all students, and we actually also encourage all of our staff and faculty to uh, come to these chapels as well. It's a way for our, our campus to have a form of community um, centered around uh, the, the chapel time together. Now, uh, it's not a requirement of our institution to be a Christian, to, to be a part of our institution. We, we um, don't make that a requirement. We have many students from many different backgrounds who come to our campus. Uh, but that is a part of our institution is the chapel piece. And so that is a requirement for all students to be a part of, although we're not requiring all students to um, profess Christianity as, as their religion. Um, when students graduate our program, they get a certificate of completion of, in liberal arts in a concentration area. And so in their first year, uh, the first semester, our students declare a concentration. We have six that they can pick from. Um, those are listed on the screen. Those concentrations help us to determine um, what types of internships would be available for our students um, and what uh, traditional classes they'd like to go into. And so this would be areas of interest that they'd be wanting to focus in on. Um, when they go into the, uh, the traditional classes, um, they audit those classes, which means that they're not getting college credit for them, but they're participating and uh, being involved in the classroom um, environment and activities there. A uh, separate syllabus may be created by the professors. It's not required that they create a separate syllabus, but we do ask that the professors allow our students to engage with the material on the level that they can. And so they'll um, have a learning advisor who goes with them. I'm gonna talk about the advisors in just a minute, but they're there to support our students and provide accommodations. And so they'll work with the professors to talk about, you know, maybe this assignment, um, instead of doing a, a 10 page paper on this topic, maybe we do uh, a one page paper on this topic, or maybe we, um, instead of a 500 word forum post, maybe we can just have them write a paragraph on uh, what, what the materials talking about. It's a way for our students to be engaged in an area of interest of theirs without having that pressure of having to do well in the class. Um, and so we um, also have on and off campus internships in our program. And so our first semester is really focused on who our student is and um, having them declare a concentration and helping them to understand which direction they'd like to go. And we call that person-centered planning. They create a whole person-centered plan in that first semester to identify their abilities and their interests. Then they go to an on-campus internship, um, which is kind of matched up with those abilities and interests. And so uh, some of our on-campus internships have been at our um, university business office or the registrar's office, um, our advancement office, food services, uh, campus safety, or um, our uh, uh, plan operations 
team. And so many different areas that our students could go into to get some job experiences. Now, our internships aren't focused on hard skills, those skills um, for a particular trade, but they're really focused on those soft skills that can be utilized in any type of work environment. What skills do you need to be successful in any type of work environment? And so that's our first year we do on campus. Second year, we go off campus. And so we have partnerships with um, over 20 different businesses uh, in the Elgin community. Um, we have students currently who are working at um, L the Advocate Sherman Hospital just down the way from our, um, our campus. We've also had students go to the um, uh, Gail Borden Public Library in downtown Elgin. Uh, we've had students at Anderson Animal Shelter in South Elgin. We have students at Planet Fitness and um, working in uh, schools and after, after school programs. Um, and so many different opportunities for our students based on their interests. And so uh, we are a smaller program um, and we, we try to utilize that to make it as uh, individualized and um, customized for each one of our students as we possibly can. And now the, the key supports that we give to our students um, are, are through our RISE student advisors. And so student advisors are traditional undergraduate students that we hire um, to support our students in three key areas, uh, residentially, vocationally, and academically. And so we have resident advisors who are hired to support our students, usually one advisor for every two students, as they're living in the dorms. And so the resident advisor is there to kind of help our students to navigate dorm situations, how to live in a dorm, how to do my laundry, keeping up with um, cleaning my dorm and things like that, providing uh, hygiene reminders and, and uh, like cleanliness reminders, doing room checks. They're also there to help our students navigate um, the social situations of college. How, how, do you, how do you go through a roommate conflict? You know, I, I tell my students all the time, um, when you're living together with somebody, you're going to have some conflict. And so how do you navigate that? Our resident advisors are there to help our students walk through that process. Um, they're also there to help encourage them to participate in all aspects of college life. And so, um, as we'll see in, in a minute, uh, everything that's available for any college student on our campus is also available for our students. And so we want them to know um, what is available and how to engage in those different activities. Our learning advisors accompany our students to their traditional class and they provide accommodations like note taking or test proctoring. They might help to modify some of those assignments with their professors as well. We do also have a learning advisor who leads a study session with a group of students twice a week. And so every student has two one hour study sessions um, each week so that they can uh, go with, to an advisor to help them kind of uh, organize their homework uh, know what's coming up next and, and get their homework done in the library setting. And then our vocational advisors support our students at their internships. And so they're kind of like job coaches, helping to make sure that they're trained appropriately and make sure that they are um, understanding the tasks being asked of them and working alongside them in those tasks as well. And so we're currently the largest employer of our traditional undergraduate student body. We have about 31 traditional students that um, are supporting our students in these various ways. And so we do live on campus. They live in the same dorms as our uh, traditional undergraduate students. All freshman students live in either Ohio Hall for females or Wilson Hall for males. And so our students are the same. Um, they'll come in their first year and be able to live in those dorms. They, they room with another RISE student. Um, and then they're kind of Jack and Jill style suites. And so they have a connecting bathroom to the room next to them. We put their RA in that room next to them so that it's somebody within our program who has direct contact with our students there. Um, in their second year, students are able to uh, potentially move up to an upperclassman um, dorm situation in our Lindner Tower. And so that's a, a sophomore dorm situation. There's three people to a room and they have their own bathroom in that that dorm situation too. And so it's kind of that next level um, with extra people in the mix um, for their housing situation. 
And then some of the activities our students can participate in, like I said, any, anything that's available for our, our traditional student body, our students are able to participate in as well. Um, we have our Blue Crew Spirit Squad that students can, can be a part of. Um, we do a homecoming dance each year. And so we had 16 of our RISE students participate in that this last year. Um, Taste of Judson, which is a, a international student event. We have many different international students on our campus. Um, choir, plays, um, different uh, uh, groups and clubs that are on our campus, our students are able to participate in. The only thing that is, is not available for our students is our um, collegiate sports. And so that's reserved for degree seeking students because they receive scholarships and other requirements that have to be at play there. Um, but we do also offer a Special Olympics basketball team for any of our students who want to participate in a competitive sport as well. And so we have that opportunity for students too. Now the tuition fees room and board for our program, um, this last year it was just over 27,000. That is all inclusive. So that includes tuition, that includes all technology fees or um, residential fees, and then housing and um, uh, meal plans. We have 19 meal plan for all of our students which means that they get the opportunity to um, be in a, uh, or to get their meals um, anytime that the, the cafeteria is open there. Um, because we're a comprehensive transition program, we do qualify for um, FAFSA. And so you can get uh, Pell or MAP grants, um, depending on if you qualify for those funds. And then we also have an internal scholarship process as well. Um, and so we have different endowments and scholarships available for that as well. And so we like to say that RISE students are Judson students. They have the opportunity to have a college experience while learning independent living skills and vocational skills. Um, and we, uh, we as a community have been, um, have, has improved with having our RISE students on our campus. And so um, they're supported by the, the rest of the students, um, not just from those advisors, but uh, in, in general, they um, really are embraced by our, our student body. And so they, they truly are Judson University students. Um, and so I'd love to answer any questions that uh, anybody has. I know I tried to go through that really quickly to make sure we had enough time um, for some questions. And so uh, I saw a couple popping in the chat. I know a couple of people have asked if we could get a copy of your PowerPoint. Oh, absolutely. Yes, I will send that to you, Linda, and then you yeah, can send it to me and I can send it out to everybody that registered. Perfect. That'd be great. Um, do you guys have anything else? No, no more. No questions. Thank you very much. Okay, You're watch everybody. Here. I'll send that out uh, either tonight or tomorrow once I get it from Drew. <laughs> yes. So, I will send you. that right as I log off here. Okay, great. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Yes. Next up, we have Elizabeth Potter. I saw that she's on the call from the PACE program at National Lewis University. Um, welcome. Thanks for joining us today. And Elizabeth, take it away. You need to unmute yourself. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Linda. I wanted to not unmute myself until you were done talking. So. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So happy Friday, everybody. So what a day of a lot of information. And so what I hope to accomplish today is to give you an overview of the PACE program. I apologize if there's a big echo. Uh, I'm in a study, I'm in a study hall of, at our university center of our student dorms today. Um, Linda, is it, is it, do we have any questions? Okay. Oh, I see that with Andrew. Okay, good. So let me share my screen. Uh, <clears throat> okay, great. All right. So good. All right. Thank you, Linda, for letting me know that you can see it. Uh, so again, my name is Elizabeth Potter. I'm the Outreach Development Specialist at PACE at National Lewis University. So we're located in downtown Chicago. We have two campuses um, uh, right on Michigan Avenue. That's 18 South Michigan, as well as 122 South Michigan Avenue. Uh, and uh, let me share with you um, really who we are. So for those of you that have been, have really made a difference in this arena with this student demographic, you know that maybe 
40 years ago, there was almost nothing that existed within the different programs that you're seeing today. So we actually have been around, we were one of the, um, there were th two other programs like ours that existed. We started back in the 80s. Um, looks like somebody wants to be entered in the waiting room. Uh, so <laughs> well, I will let you handle that, Linda. Um, so we actually started in 1986. And so actually families came to us. We, uh, they came to the National College of Education. And they came to us saying that their students were seeing their siblings, they were seeing their friends go off to college and what options were available. And so we're at, considered one of the leading models in post-secondary edu education for young men and women with multiple learning disabilities. We are considered a comprehensive transition program. You, meant, you heard that with Judson. So a comprehensive transition program means that the program has been approved by the, the Department of Education. They've taken a look at the opponents of the curriculum. And so for families that are eligible, they, if they apply for the FAFSA, they may qualify for a federal gift aid. We have been, since the beginning, a primarily a residential program. And so what we have recently done is actually created another access for our families. And so we have, uh, in the last year, created a commuter option. So there are some students where um, they're ready to take that next step, but not quite move out yet. They're still, they have structures at home that are really working for them. Perhaps they're working already and they just need something to wrap around them. So we do offer the commuter option. So they'll be able to, they participate in the full programming. However, in the evening time they go home and then they come back with us. Now, the nice thing about the commuter program is that's a year to year. So perhaps students move in with us for the first year, maybe even the second year, and then families choose to then commuter by the third year. So it gives some flexibility, not only financially, but also to meet the students where they're at. Uh, I'm excited to share with you, we have our Path to Pace program. Um, we've now had this in place for going on our fourth year. And so what we saw is that students, once they've been accepted into the program, there's almost, it could be up to a year between their acceptance until their starting school. So if you think about it for all of us that before we went to college, what were some of our biggest concerns? I don't know anybody. <laughs> I hope they like me. What did the teachers expect from me, right? Which is probably why some of us chose colleges like myself where I knew somebody, so it wouldn't be so frightening. So we wanted to be able to address that with our students. So our Path to Pace program begins, um, it's two terms of classes with us. So almost seven months of programming with us on a weekly basis, which is conducted virtually. So what happens is a student is accepted into the program and then that cohort, because we accept students one time per year, begins the Path to Pace program and they're following a curriculum that's going to build on all of those skills that the program is going to expect. So we're starting to piece together what's going to be expected so that way they know what that is they meet all of their instructors virtually they're also building relationships with each other so by the time that they move in in September they know everybody that they're going to be with in their first year they know all of the instructors they understand the pattern and the expectations the coaching that they'll be receiving and you know we've really seen tremendous success with our students after being with us in the path to pays program some of that nervous edge um, is really um, gives them a chance to focus on all of the other pieces. Now we offer that program at no additional cost. So it's something that we're very committed to providing our families. It is a big step to move out on your own. And so that's something that, um, uh, that um, has made a very big difference for our, not only our families, for our students. So every, I love doing this presentation because I get to look at all of our happy faces. These are all of our students. And so all of these beautiful people, to give you an idea of the really the um, spectrum, the variety of what our students are. So you may see that some programs have minimal reading scores or writing scores, or they're looking for certain levels of assessments. And we really take a holistic approach to the students. So we realize, as many of you do, that what shows up in testing is not necessarily a demonstration of capability, the demonstration of the desire of the students. And so we don't have minimal acceptable scores that we're looking at. Um, but here is an idea, or this gives you at least a, 
framework to be able to see the type of students that we work with. So most of our students are between the ages of 18 and at the very high end, which means they're graduating with us is 28 years old. So we have three ways that students typically come to school with us. First is immediately after high school. The most common time period, however, that students um, join the program is after about a year or a two year of a transition program, because now they're ready to pull all of those pieces together and then move out on their own. We have a small portion of our population um, have attempted a college program where there was an integration of traditional college um, curriculum. And due to everything outside of that, that executive functioning, those organizational skills, those social skills, they really struggled. So they, they come to our program as a, as a college preparation before they then go back to a college program like that. All of our students are diagnosed with an intellectual learning or developmental disability. Our students, we request that they've all completed their K through 12 education. They're not required to have their high school diploma if they do have a certificate of completion that's acceptable as well. And we're really just um, committed to that our students show they've demonstrated that they have that foundation of, of a K through 12 education. We are not considered a, a therapeutic program. So our students have a level of independence and maturity um, where they're responsible for their personal hygiene. Um, uh, you know, so they're the ones who's, who are taking care of bathing themselves. Also, if they have medication that they're the ones independently taking it. Now we will scaffold based upon where our students are at. So there are some students where their parents have managed all of that, um, but, and we'll work with them to be able to put their pills or medication in a pill caddy. We'll make sure that if depending on what the need is, that it's a, a visual that they're actually taking it. However, we're not gonna hold on to their medication and then administer it to them. So we will provide all the support needed so that they're still following their medication. Um, uh, uh, regimen. However, they're the ones that are going to begin to hold on to and take care of that. If you actually interviewed all of our students, and so right now we have approximately, uh, we have approximately um, 45 students in the program. At maximum, we're at 55 students total. So that's at first year, second year, and third year total. Incoming classes uh, are between 12 and 15 students. But if you ask every single one of them, they all want to live on their own. <laughs> they're, they're all ready for it. They just can't wait to get away from home. They realize that they don't have the skills for it, for, skills for it yet, but that's what they want. And so they're very committed to being able to be in that type of environment. All of our students have a high probability of having difficulty in being in a traditional college curriculum, even with additional support. A big component of our families and the students that are very successful with this is that they have a personal network. They have support around them that understands the importance of the partnership that's needed um, to be able to, for their students to be able to foster and as well as support their independence. Um, so that way we're working with their therapists, the outside family support, anything that's needed, even if they're also working, uh, working with all of that to ensure the students get in the support that they need. So I wanna give you an idea of the programming, the way that it's scheduled. They're pretty busy <laughs> from, from like nine o'clock in the morning until nine o'clock at night, there's something happening. So it's a very structured program. We find that our students are thriving in a structured program. And if you take a look at your own schedule for today, you're scheduled, <laughs> you, you know when you're doing what. And so again, we're beginning to move them towards that this is what it looks like when you're living independently. So you can just imagine if our students are right, they're living with us. So usually between six and seven o'clock, we're doing rounds. So we do have resident life advisors that are here uh, that are then again, scaffolding, giving the level of support they need. So Linda, you may be one of those that wakes up and nobody needs to worry about you. And there may be somebody else who it's like, did you hit snooze too many times and you need to get up? So we're again, supporting our students as they're going through and we're checking. 
Do you have everything you do need for the day? Did you pack your charger? Are you dressing appropriately for the weather? Did you pack your lunch, right? So we're asking those questions to ensure that they're walking out the door ready to go. Nothing like, like for me yesterday, I forgot my badge for work. It was a problem. I didn't put it in my backpack. I did not follow my schedule. <laughs> so we want to be sure our students know the consequences of that, right? So, uh, so we're working with them that. So just imagine that's happening in the morning. They're also, they're making sure that for their breakfast. So all of our students are responsible for making their breakfast as well as their lunch, right? So they're managing a budget and I'll tell you a little bit more about that. So they're having their breakfast. We make sure that they're being nourished. They're packing the lunch that they're made and they're going out the door. And that's Monday through Thursday. So this schedule is actually not accurate. It's Monday through Thursday. And then for first year students, two days a week, they're walking from University Center, which is 525 South State Street to 18 South Michigan Avenue. It is like if you're hustling about a 10 minute walk. If you're strolling, it's probably more like 15 or 16 minutes. So as they're getting up and walking out the door, we actually have um, a system where they um, sign out electronically. So that way it's timestamped. We know when they left the building, we know who they're leaving with. Um, we know how long it's going to take for them to walk to, um, to National Lewis to the campus. So they're walking out the door. They're usually in a group. First year students are going to have staff members with them in the very beginning until we know that they understand how to pay attention to the crosswalk, right? Where should you stand to make sure that you're safe? What should you be paying attention to? Um, you should probably shouldn't have your earbuds in. You should have your phone away. So we're having those type of conversations with them as we're doing the walk from the campus, uh, excuse me, from the dorms to the campus. So two days a week, our first year students are in functional academic classes. And so these are functional academic classes. These are all of the things that um, I wish my niece had the skill sets for. She's 17 going on 18. And we're having conversations about budget. Here's how much money you have. So our students create a weekly budget. So they're cashing a check in that first term. And they have a certain amount of money to put aside for groceries, money for their Saturday activities. They're putting money aside for hygiene and cleaning supplies, as well as long-term savings goals. So they're beginning to learn, this is what I have, and this is where it goes. So if they're going grocery shopping and they absolutely want four jugs of Gatorade, is they really want the juice, they're not going to have enough money, right? They're going to run out. They're going to say, oh, they're at the checkout and they can't have, they can't purchase their breakfast and lunch items and the jugs of Gatorade. So now what? Alyssa, yes. Alyssa, I'm going to chime in. We're, we're running short on time. So if you want to take the last two minutes. Oh talk faster <laughs> to, to wrap up and then um just let us know where people totally can. i'll send this to you exactly. okay totally yeah thank you i'm sorry i didn't realize it took so long so you can see from the structure again that two days a week is functional academics and two days is internship our students start working from their second week of classes it's critical for our students that they're graduating with over a thousand um, work experience hours. They actually have a resume where they're showing consistency, right? And they have a job coach with them to be able to learn those skill sets. It's critical for our students to have those professional communication skills, the actual skills to do the job, right? For, to, for them to actually be in paid employment. We're, we've been very fortunate. We've been around for over 36 years. We have over 55 partnership sites with things like the Shedd Aquarium and Chicago Public School System with J.P. Morgan. So our students have the ability to have a variety of different experiences in their externship sites. I'm certainly going to send this to send this to you. Uh, and actually, I'm going to go to the last. Oh, so we do have a summer program. I forgot to tell you, it's actually open. It's an amazing program. It's four days, Monday through Thursday. It's not residential. It's from nine until three, and it's open to people at the age of 16. So you can begin to have the exposure to what is possible after high school. And so, and the cost is $400. So it's very reasonable and in reach for so many families families to begin to have the students excited about what's next. So I always encourage our families to take a look at that. And we are accepting applications now for that. Um, we keep our summer program to no more than 12 students. So we keep it small to mirror our, like the size of what our cohorts are. 
Okay, so this is uh, my contact information, my email address, so you can reach out to me. Uh, uh, I appreciate your time. I can't believe it went by so fast. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for letting me know to cut the hook. Uh, thank you for letting me be here. And I look forward to answering any of your questions in the future. Elizabeth, how, how long is the summer program that you're talking about? It's four days. Four days, okay. Monday through Thursday from nine until three. Did you say that they get they a thousand hours of internship stuff? Wow, that's a lot. Correct. So they go from the first year from two days a week, the third, the, the second year, they go to three days a week. And by their fourth year where they're building the muscle and now they're working four days a week. So we recognize where they really need to begin to build the stamina and the structure to be able to support them to work that many hours. They at any point get paid for those or are they all unpaid at that point? Um, so what will happen is by the end of the second year, and yes, I will definitely send the PowerPoint, um, but by the end of the second year, they're actively applying for paid positions. And so most of our students by the third year, if it's not one full-time position, they may be part-time with an internship, two part-time. It depends on the student and it depends on the family in terms of the long-term goals, but most of them are in paid employment by their third year. Our last graduating class, 100%, 100% of them had paid employment before they graduated. And so the cost of the program is 47,000. That includes for the year, that includes the, the tuition of the curriculum as well as the room and board. So I mentioned to you, they're responsible for their breakfast and their lunch. Um, however, the, they have a meal plan that takes care of their dinner. Is this, yes, it's only four days, yes. The summer program is only four days. So it's a wonderful taste. Each day gives them experience of what our curriculum is. So they have a, they have the opportunity to experience the social skills. Uh, they, we take them to employment sites. So it's a chance for them to get a glimpse of um, what, uh, if they came to our program or any program that was after high school, a chance to see what it would look like. And the email that everybody received with their Zoom links, I did attach the, um, the PACE summer program flyer. Oh, uh, thanks, Linda. <laughs> so you have, you have, do have two flyers from PACE already that were sent to you with your Zoom. But and yeah, if you can send your PowerPoint, that would be great. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll send you the PowerPoint, Linda. And the other attachment is an FAQ. So really the questions that you're thinking about, or you maybe you'll remember after I leave, <laughs> you'll be able to find them there on the FAQ. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. You have a great day. Thanks for your time. Appreciate You're it. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Okay, next up, we're going to hear from Scott Perkins from Shepherds College. I see Scott on the line. Welcome. Thanks for spending your time with us. So you're on. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having us. We, we certainly appreciate being included in this presentation. So thanks everyone who's spending part of their day, um, kind of learning about college options for, for, your, for your students. Um, can you just give me a second here to... Pull up a PowerPoint. Can you, are we good to go with sharing? Everyone can see? Okay, great. All right. So again, so my name is Scott Perkins. I'm the Director of Admissions at Shepherds College. Um, we're up in Union Grove, Wisconsin. So just a little bit north of you guys. Um, and would, again, just appreciate the opportunity to spend a couple minutes talking um, through what our, what our program is. So, um, before we get going too much here, I just want to just take a second and think. Um, and if for, for some people, it might be helpful to put yourself back at 18 or, or 17, but um, just think for yourself. Take, take a second and think. What, what, what do you want to be doing in 15 years? Um, maybe it's retirement. Maybe it's a new job. Maybe it's a second career. Um, maybe it's a new hobby. Who knows? But um, at, you know, again, at 17 and 18, it's, it's, a, it's probably that first career. It's trying to figure out your way, figure out kind of what established your life. Just, just take a second and think about what are, what are three things that would have to happen in order to achieve that goal? Whether it's, you know, go picking a, a particular college or maybe getting a, a certificate in something or um, beginning to explore something, who knows, whatever those steps might be. Maybe it's introducing yourself to the right people, whatever the case is. But there's a pretty there's a pretty um, there's a pretty straightforward path for that, right? You can you can kind of connect the dots, and it might not go straight, but it's gonna it might it might zig and zag a touch. But there's but there's some pretty um, tangible steps that we can take. Um, as we all know, that 
path isn't so straightforward for, for students with, with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Um, it can, there's not a whole lot of options and, and opportunities after, after students kind of age out of the trans transition program. So really that's, that's the problem that Shepherds College is existing to solve. Um, it's, that, it's the idea that students with disabilities have, have unrealized potential um, and they're just, they don't have the same opportunities and options um, as others as, as far as developing is the, as far as developing those things. So really that's the problem that Shepherds College is, is hoping to insert itself into, into the lives of our students, helping them helping them work towards the, their potential because they certainly have a ton of it um, and giving them that, that opportunity to lead that fulfilling life. So Shepherds College, that's, that's, that's the whole reason that, that we exist. We sit on about 90 acres of land up in Union Grove, Wisconsin. So we're about, I don't know, we're, we're just over the border um, and just, just due east of Racine, Kenosha. I'm sorry, to, I did, I did Lake Michigan, due west of Racine and Kenosha. Um, so just down the road a touch. So um, again, about 90 acres of land. Um, our ministry was, was started in the 60s, um, but over the years it has grown it into, into Shepherd's College and we, we serve about 90, 90 current students. Um, that are enrolled in our in our programming. So um, we'd love to have you up at some point to show you around. We we truly believe here um, that all of those 90 acres uh, are designed to, to help our students um, thrive. So we believe this. It's when you learn in an environment designed specifically for you, you thrive, right? So all of those 90 acres, all of our staffing, all of this supports, all of our learning strategies are all geared towards assisting um, and giving our students the best chance to realize that, that potential. So before we get going to here, get, before we get going too much, um, we'd love to, sh to share with you um, and, and give a chance to hear from some of our, from some of our students. Scott, I can't hear the video. I can see it, but I can't hear it. Thank you. I think I maybe didn't click the right button on the share feature. So sorry about that. We will try it one more time. And I, I didn't. All right, let's start it over. Sorry about that. I was scared uh, uh, to come here, yes, because I had no idea what uh, was going on. I didn't know who I would meet. Um, but after the first month, I felt like this place became like my second home. A little bit nervous at Shepherds because I didn't know what this experience would be like, but it's a rewarding one. It just worth it, and I w I didn't become nervous because I met I know these wonderful people, the staff and students for years. I was scared at first. But then I met some people that were first year students and um, they were very friendly and welcoming and so then by the first week or two I felt at home. Living in the dorms is a very new experience. I've never done anything like that, but it's, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's kind of like being at home now and so it's make a lot of friends and everything like that. So. Overall, how staff has helped me is show pretty much who I truly am by learning skills that will help me in the future, such as sorting laundry or knowing how to budget or pretty much knowing how to cope in different ways. Other students should come to Shepherds because they'll learn more about um, independence and learn more about God and um, and do a lot of fun things. This place is nurturing. This place doesn't like tear you down. It tries to like build you up. It tries to impact you. It tries to see what you don't see in yourself. Now, I am ready to become a more independent student and grow into a good man. 
It's a really great experience. The classes are a lot of fun. The staff is really nice and you make friends that will probably be for you, friends for the rest of your life. Honestly, the reason why other students should come is because they get to be with other people who are dealing with similar things or have their own challenges and I think that they can face them and they can go to classes and learn new things so anybody with a disability should come. Before we got going too much, we just wanted to give you a kind of a give a chance to hear from our students because they're really the they're really the the stars of our show here. Um, kind of our underlying philosophy at Shepherd's College is this: it's a, it's it's trademarked appropriate independence, and as you can see, it's supported self sufficiency that is aligned with the strengths of each individual, and that's really the emphasis. It's this the strengths. It's helping students to understand that their disability is it influences the way that they see the world, but it's it doesn't limit the way that they see the world. So. What, what are their strengths and what are they capable of doing? And it's, it's that really that empowerment piece. And the four principles that we really focus on here is that everyone's created on and for a purpose. Um, everyone has value in whatever, and we're gonna help them find that and find that vocational match. We're all individuals for community. So what's where, where we fit in, in the community um, is a big piece that we, that we talk a lot about. The idea of being trained for life, that vocation, what are you meant to be doing? Um, and the idea of empowered, empowered to serve. So that's that's really our underlying philosophy at Shepherd's College. But we really, our students come to Shepherd's and they have two goals. Um, the first is meaningful employment after graduation. And the second is gonna be independent living skills um, and to, to, to live as independently as possible. So those are the two goals that, that our students have when they arrive on campus. They work towards um, choosing a major. Um, so we'll kind of go through our three, our three vocations that, that students can choose. Um, the first is culinary arts. Um, and we'd love to share, give you an opportunity to hear a little bit more about that. Mm, can you smell that? We're just outside the Culinary Arts Bakery and they're making something incredible for the cafe at Community State Bank. Culinary Arts is one of three occupational fields of study that a Shepherd's College student may choose. During their first two years in culinary arts, students roll up their sleeves, put on chef's jackets and hats to develop food service, restaurant, and bakery skills. Students receive classroom instruction and hands-on experience in each area to match their specific abilities. During their final year in culinary arts, students put all they've learned to use in real life working environments, both on campus in our commercial kitchen and in the surrounding community. Everything students learn helps prepare them for a career in culinary arts. So that's the first of our mm, three majors. Can you so smell that? Talking here, we'll get, we'll get, we'll move on from there. All right. So culinary arts is the first one, and we'll talk about kind of the, the progression of all three in the second year. But we'll rip through all, all three of our majors. So the first is culinary arts. The second is going to be horticulture, and she's going to explain a little bit more about that. Do you love to get your hands dirty? <laughs> well, students in the horticulture program here at Shepherd's College spend a lot of time in the Owen Lackey greenhouse. The combination of classroom education and get your hands dirty experiences in the greenhouse, around campus, and with employers in our community creates an ideal learning environment for students who are looking for employment in horticulture. Students in the horticulture program also have the opportunity for retail sales experience right here in the greenhouse and work experience in the on-campus Community Supported Agriculture Program, or CSA. The CSA program gives students the opportunity to work with students from other colleges and provide locally sourced food to our community. Great. So the second is horticulture. Do you love to get your major, hands dirty. <laughs> fast forwarding these is technology. So it's culinary arts, horticulture, and technology are our three majors. And Becky's going to share a little bit more about our tech major. Welcome to the MITRE Center, home to Shepherd's College Technology Program. Students who choose technology as their occupational field of study learn valuable skills that are in demand in today's workplace. The technology program has four education tracks available, professional office, web development, IT maintenance and repair, and mass media production. While at Shepherd's College, students learn career skills like keyboarding, data entry, internet research, file and network management, programming, and digital media. Students even have film opportunities in our Cyclorama. 
This technical knowledge and skill development prepares students for employment doing office work, software development, information technology, computer repair, or media production. So those are Welcome to areas. the MITRE Center. Welcome to the <laughs> MITRE Center, <laughs> home to Shepherds College Technology. All right. So the way that our, just like everything on campus, it's, it's a progression. So all three majors, so as, as, a, as a first year student, students do not need to know what, what, what major they're, they're interested in pursuing. Um, they're going to get the experience, all three of them, as a first semester um, student on campus. So they'll, they'll, they'll learn about their aptitudes, how that might may or may not match, you know, the oppor job opportunities after, after Shepherds or after graduation, um, and really just get just given the information, information they need to make an informed decision on, on, the, on which major they would like to do. So as, as you saw, we have all hands-on learning at Shepherds College. We have small students, um, student to, to staff ratios. It's about six to one um, students to staff. We typically have an instructor and then a pair inside of each classroom. So um, small, it's all very hands-on environments. Um, so that's really what the emphasis of year two, it's learning what you need to, learning the information and the content um, in interactive ways so that you can have have the background information to be successful, you know, in, 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 in seeking and getting a, a job. As a third year student, Monday through Thursday, they're actually, they're out in either the community or they're, or they're on campus doing an occupational experience, which is just what we call an internship. So that's, that's what they're doing Monday through Thursday. They're getting real uh, feedback from, you know, employers um, on their performance, getting tips, getting, you know, and really growing it in that environment um, as a third year student. On Friday, they're back and they're kind of doing their, their more gen ed classes. Our general ed classes are all more um, functional skills. So our, our math classes are all based around money management and personal finance. That's the progression that starts with the money management. All of our students have a, have a bank account up at, up at, at a local bank that they go and they, they navigate and they, they um, work on managing their accounts and budgeting and doing all that stuff. Um, you know, as you can see, it's it's a, a lot of our curriculum is social emotional learning, how to, how to first um, know yourself, the intrapersonal skills. Um, and then working in, interpersonally, right? The conflict with peers, and then ultimately applying those same skills to, to the, you know, to the, to the, um, to the vocation or, or the job setting. Um, moving forward, all of these, all of these, all of these classes are actually going to be taught in, in the context of the of the vocation. So it'll be um, like, for instance, applied technology would be applied technology inside of the um, inside of the major. So it would be the the, the, the applied the course. The content of that class would be different depending on if you're a culinary arts student, a horticulture student, or a technology student. So all of these, all of these classes are going to be taught inside the context of, of the vocation moving forward. So our, we said there's two goals for our, that our students have. One is, is, is getting a job. The second is independent living. So we have a, a three-step housing progression on campus that students would work through. Um, it's not a first year, second year, third year. Um, it's more of a safety um, and competency-based progression. So we have a, the, all, all of our students, regardless of, of year, would start in a dorm setting. It's more of a community. Um, they're living with 15 or 20 other students um, and really just they're developing the foundation of life skills. Um, how do I live with a roommate? How do I live in community? How do I, how do I cook? How do I clean? Um, really getting targeted instruction by, by trained staff um, on, on, the, on kind of the fundamental daily living skills, um, what, what you need to be, to be independent. The second step of our progression is a home or a hall. Our, our ratios go down now. So um, 15 or 20 as in the dorm goes down to eight um, in, in, in the home or hall setting. And even inside that eight, they actually, they get split up into two kitchens. So they're working um, with four other kitchens, I'm sorry, four other students to, to one kitchen. So now, now, as you can imagine, they're cooking more often, they're cleaning more often in the progression. Um, they're, getting, they're getting more independence with less support and the support looks different each, each step. The last step of the progression is an apartment setting. It's definitely the most independent environment. It's simulated for what we're hoping for all of our students um, to, to, to achieve after graduation. Not all of our students make it, to, make it up to the apartments because again, it's a safety um, and competency bit kind of focus. Um, but this, they would live with one other student and they would navigate apartment living. So they would be waking up independently. They would be um, with, with support. We know all students need a little bit different support, um, but they would be getting themselves to their to their transportation site for their internship and things like that. So they're cooking dinner by themselves um, with their roommate. They're, they're doing all their meal planning, all of their uh, grocery shopping. 
um, with that with that person. So like, all of those skills are progressed. So we don't just throw them in, throw them into it, but they, they're taught explicitly all along the way. Scott, Some other things. I'm sorry, we're running a little short on time. Um, you got it. So we've scooched everything around to make sure you got your time. But um, one of the questions is, um, what is the cost? Of course. For those different settings. Absolutely. So, um, so our, our tuition for next year is going to be fifty-two thousand. Um, through our accreditation, we, students have access to FAFSA, and there's other. We, we have a financial aid coordinator on campus as well. Um, there's a lot of pieces uh, that work together to create a students' financial aid package um, as well. But uh, so, I'm sorry, I'll, I will I will just skirt through the rest of it. Um, if you if you if you're interested in more about Shepherd's College, please feel free to connect with us in the admissions office here. We'd love to talk you through it. Um, that application process, um, and then lastly, assigning the SOAR. We'll skip the video. But there's some upcoming things and ways to interact with us if you are interested. Um, we're having some on-campus preview days coming up, um, as you can see, March 11th, April 8th, and 22nd of April, um, and a couple of days in, in May as well. That'll give you a really comprehensive perspective um, into, into what happens at Shepherds College. Um, and then lastly, we are going to do some virtual preview days as well. Um, so all, the, all those can be accessed and sign up through our website. Great. Thank you so much, Scott. Can you um, uh, provide me your email address or you'll send this to Linda and we'll send it out to everyone who's attended today so they can see and get Thank the you so much. Yeah, we can have a copy of the PowerPoint. That would be wonderful. Just zip it to the CTC email and I'll forward it to everyone else. You got it. Thanks so much. And sorry about the time. I apologize. No, that's all right. Thank you. It's a, it goes by fast. <laughs> Thanks for being patient with it. Thank yeah. you guys. No worries. Thank you. Okay. Last but not least, Sarah Althorpe from the University of Wisconsin Whitewater, the LIFE program. Uh, we may go a couple minutes over because we're running a little long, but I um, want to make sure Sarah gets her full time in here. So thanks for joining us, Sarah, and you're on. Hi, I want to be really mindful of your time. So I'm going to start sharing my screen as I introduce myself. I am the program coordinator of the LIFE program, which means I am basically a principal slash instructor with our students. I spend time, I'm working on the admin side, but I also spend time actively in our classroom so that everybody is on the same page. Um, I am having a slight issue. Give me just a second. There we go. Now we will actually be able to see the PowerPoint, hopefully. So. Our program goals are to prepare our students for competitive employment, independent living, a healthy and balanced lifestyle, and an exposure to the complete college experience. One of the big things for us is that we are housed on the University of Wisconsin Whitewater campus, which means we have access to approximately 12,000 undergrads all of the time that are around and interested in working with our students and being a part of college. So our program features, we have many layers of support, including in the dorms, in the apartments, at the job site, at, in the traditional university classroom and in our classroom. We have approximately 13 staff at the moment and we have 12 students. So those staff to student ratios are really awesome. Um, we are the first program of the kind in the UW system. We are the first program on a UW or a, on a University of Wisconsin campus, which has been really exciting. We have identical program fees for both in-state and out-of-state. And we, um, the first two years of the program, students live on campus in a dorm with other undergrads. Our students are 18 to 25 when they enter the program with an intellectual disability. Our focus is primarily those students who fit the ID criteria. Um, they need to be able to function independently for several hours without significant behavioral problems, perform their basic hygiene routine, and some other things. You will have access to this PowerPoint. I sent it to Linda already, so you should be able to see it. Um, here is the schedule at the moment. You'll notice we are in our classroom from about nine to four with students popping in and out as appropriate. So not everyone is sitting in this classroom from nine to four every day. That's not at all what it is, but we do have things happening in our classroom every day from nine to four. Um, sometimes we're teaching functional academics, sometimes we're teaching daily living skills, employment skills. We have students who go out onto campus to attend their university class. They take one class per semester in 
at the university with other undergrads. Sometimes that's for credit, sometimes it's audited depending on the student, their interests and the appropriateness of the class. Um, we have a literacy group and a social skills group that happens through the speech and language pathology grad students here on campus. It gets them some contact hours and really has stepped up our interventions in that area. We also, the rest of these things are taught by licensed special educators in our classroom. I'm not going to talk through this because I know that time is short, but this is sort of the content that we cover in each of those areas. So because you all have access to this, I will skip these slides, but this gives you some really specifics as to what types of things we are teaching in each area. So the big money question, here is our current estimated annual cost for the first two years of the program. And this is all in the program fees, room and board in, on campus, membership to the gym on campus, all in. So our students, during their first two years, it is a classroom focus. We're spending time building the skills they need to go out in the community. And at the two-year mark, there is a graduation. There is, they receive certificate of completing the basic program here at LIFE. And at that point, we will transition into the advanced program. And about half to two thirds of our students are invited back for the advanced program. At that point, we move them off campus into an apartment and the focus switches to employment. At that point, their goal is 20 hours of competitive employment a week. Um, some funding sources are students use IRIS, which is Wisconsin's um, self-directed support system. And we are, students have access to federal financial aid. There's also things like social security benefits and scholarships that can be used to help pay for the program. Um, our parent involvement and communication, we send weekly newsletters out to families and post on social media so they know what activities are happening, they know what's happening in the evenings, on the weekends, all of those good things. During extended breaks, we get home, some homework for them to do and we check in, see how that's going, make sure that there's feedback. And our families are invited to come to campus. We are a thriving college campus. We have families that come up for almost every football game in fall. A bunch of families come watch basketball games this time of year. Because we are on a traditional college campus, we really have that community to support us. So the next steps, if you are interested, is to complete an application. Unfortunately, at this point, we're looking at applying for the 23-24 school year. Our application deadline for next year has already passed. If you are, if based on that application, we invite you for an interview, and then based on that, you will um, receive our decision. Over the summer, there is orientation, and we do a variety of things that way to make sure that everybody is comfortable being on campus. And then those first couple of weeks, we really focus on building community and making sure that everybody's comfortable. So just to show off, here are some of our folks. Um, the picture on the right is our first graduation. We had students graduate the basic program for the first time last year. And so that was a really big milestone for us to meet. That does also mean that we are a newer program. We have had students on campus. This is our third year. So next year, once we admit the students for next year, we will finally have our full four, four cohorts on campus. And we are so excited to keep growing and figuring out how to support our program. I think one of the big things for the LIFE program is that we are small. We accept four to five students per cohort. And that has allowed us to really focus and be personalizing our experience. Um, instead of having specific programs or majors that our students have, we work with them individually to figure out their goals and help them meet their goals. By being on a college campus, they're able to take a variety of courses. And so we're able to sort of find the overlap of their interests and possible employment. We also work towards during the second year, they have some unpaid internships on campus that fit their areas of interest so that by the time they get to year three, if they're invited for the advanced program, they already know where to go looking for jobs. And they're able to, we support them with that, but they're able to find those applications and they know what's out there in our community and they're really able to be well connected. I feel like I flew through that, but that was sort of my goal so that you all would have a chance to ask questions. 
just want to tell everybody, um, Sarah did send me her PowerPoint in advance. So you all received that linked to the email that you got your Zoom link. So you, you have her PowerPoint available to you. Thanks Perfect. for doing that. <laughs> Is there any questions? I'm looking <laughs> mostly about PowerPoints and things. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're only taking four or five students, are you are there a lot of people applying or how are you deciding who's the best fit for you? Yeah, so we received 16 applications for our four to five seats for next year. Um, and that application process is really pretty intensive. There's a lot of parts. There's questions that the students answer. We request documentation of an intellectual disability. We look at transcripts from high school. We do sort of all of those things to assess if they fit those basic criteria. And once we look through and who fits the basic criteria, we invite students and families on campus for an in-person interview. And that's our chance to get to know the families better, but it also gives the families a chance to get to know us better. We have visit days, we have open house, all of those things so that you know what you're applying to. But we also, that's sort of a personalized time that we can be answering questions and making sure that everybody's a good fit. We're really passionate. We know we're not the right program for everyone and we're a small program and we acknowledge both of those things. But it's really important to us that students have lots of opportunities. Students with intellectual disabilities 10 years ago did not have very many college opportunities. So our goal is to simply be another option. When I was looking for college in my, in my senior, junior and senior year of high school, I had dozens and dozens of opportunities. And we want students with intellectual disabilities to have those same chances to be able to find a program that fits them. And so then based on those interviews, that's really how we're able to make our decisions and uh, find the right students. And we do create a wait list. Um, based on those interviews, if we have more students that are a good fit than we have space, we will offer to some students and create a wait list because we do have families that decide we're not the right fit for whatever reason. Anyone else have any other questions? You are very efficient. <laughs> and like I say, everybody has your PowerPoint available to them. So, you know. If you have any questions, you can reach out following it. I do have everybody's emails and addresses, all the speakers today. So if there's someone who wants to um, address a certain question to anybody, you know, can zip me an email at the Connected Community email and I can link you up with those. Perfect. Speakers. The other big thing to note that I forgot to mention is our next visit day, which is sort of a half day. Come on campus, hear a little bit about the program, go on a campus tour with our students. Our final one for the year is coming up April 15th. And then in October, we do our big open house. So that's a full day experience on campus. And that's a really good time to learn more about the program. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you to I everybody for sharing your time with us today. And um, I will, uh, we'll be getting the Zoom link um, pretty quickly. So again, if you wanna just send an email to the CTC website, I can send you that link when it's available and I will send you the PowerPoints that I'm receiving from the speakers. We also had um, an individual from Trinity International University reach out to us and wanted to share some information. So I have a couple of things from their access program that I will include as well. So I think we're, I think we're good for today. Thank you so much. Have a good weekend and stay warm and the end of winter is near. Thanks everyone, enjoy your day.